This was completely unexpected, as I was able to try one of the most debated and futuristic virtual reality headsets coming later this year, supposedly. Visor from Immerse that I was able to try turned on, not me, the visor, but Joel. Even after what it seemed to be a disastrous keynote. Hey there, here, so welcome to the VRTech channel. Let's go through my first impressions of the Visor 4K Founder Edition. And let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, well, let's get into it. All right, here we are. So if it's your first time on hearing about Visor, this is supposed to be a very futuristic virtual reality headset with very high resolution, even higher than the Vision Pro, with 4K micro OLED displays, then along with an XR2 Gen 2 Plus chipset inside, with inside out tracking, eye tracking, and well, end tracking as well. Because yeah, this thing is not really meant for gaming, but actually productivity. That's the reason why we don't have any controllers with it. And this headset is worked on by Immersion, that is the company they actually create Immerse XR, a very famous productivity application on the Quest platform, Vision OS, Steam VR, well, pretty much every VR platform nowadays. So yeah, we were fast running up, so let's talk about my impression, shall we? Because I actually had very positive impression and then like things started to get a bit weird. To start out, thanks to Renji to give me the demo, we were actually in a Starbucks and I had the demo just before getting my plane to come back over here from San Francisco, so uh, it, it was pretty early. So yeah, flexibility was a bit plus, thanks indeed. But yeah, let's talk about the good, because it's no surprise that the interesting part of this headset are actually the screens and the lenses that were absolutely fantastic. Probably the best visuals I ever had in VR. These two micro OLED displays felt bright and the very vivid colors and everything was extra crisp in there. Apparently, Renji, the CEO, told me that they weren't even able to run it at full resolution. So yeah, that left me even more impressed. These two pancake lenses though were the highlight of the thing. Everything felt extra crisp, even if I was using the wrong IPD. In fact, Visor would come with fixed IPD based on your IPD when you're gonna buy it. And uh, the one that I was trying was 62 millimeters and I'm actually 66.4, so you know, Quite different. And with that, I probably didn't get the best edge clarity, but I was able to test the sweet spot that was very big indeed. And the eye box, gigantic. I actually tried to shoot the True Lenses video of the environment I was in. I was able to test, by the way, a virtual reality and mixed reality. I have the True Lenses just of the virtual reality part, but as you can see, the resolution there was very, very high and everything felt very believable. Bear in mind that this was running on an Apple Silicon MacBook and on the XR2 Plus Gen 2 chipset in the headset. And while the visuals per se were impressive, well, we gotta talk about the bad. Starting with the visuals where the distortion profile was completely wrong, so uh, you had that kind of a barrel distortion with everything kind of shifted around. With your visuals, kind of an uncomfortable scenario, not something that you will be able to use right now for more than a demo purpose. The headset itself was flickering like crazy because it was running actually at 60 hertz instead of 90 hertz. That also because the eye tracking wasn't actually working, so that means that they couldn't use for the other rendering. So they were pushing the entire resolution on this screen the entire time, even for things that you weren't looking at. And with that came the fact that the headset was getting extra toasty. Like not just for me, but also for a headset itself that was just turning off after like five minutes running, like switched off. Such in a way that Renji actually had to order a Frappuccino just, uh, you know, to keep it cool. They said that with the foveated rendering, everything will be fixed. And then actually in a tweet that it was fixed already, I think that they have also to actually bring down the brightness quite a bit to tame this stuff and maybe ramp up the fans at the same time because yeah, they weren't audible when I was using it, but I wish they were because it's better to have some fan noise that, you know, a headset that turns off after five minutes. Not that you wanna wear it for more than five minutes right now anyway, because while the thing is very light, actually one of the lightest virtual reality headsets on the market right now, and also very, very small, remember this is just 180 grams Rams Chirka, it was also pretty uncomfortable, let's say. It actually looks good though, so pick your poison, I guess. The glasses rake design is just for show to actually make people interested in that. It's also gonna come with a strap, but the strap wasn't available yet. And the nose part was completely missing, so you weren't actually able to put it at the right height for your eyes to actually go in the sweet spot of the lenses. That even if very big, 
it has its limits. One clever thing about Comfort though was actually to balance the left cable, uh, that is the one that you use with a dot of a cable on the right, they actually get together in the back and that will balance the headset very well on your face. So yeah, while it looks interesting, it's actually a very nice design. I'm really looking forward to trying this thing with an actual strap like any other VR headset because, well, with Drake's, it might look cool. Actually, it is a looker. People were coming at Starbucks to ask what were we filming? But yeah, I wanna use that thing. I don't wanna like show it off at Starbucks around. Priorities. Also remember that this is a mixed reality headset. So the two cameras in front are gonna be able to give you pass through directly, like it happens on the Vision Pro, like it happens on the MetaQuest 3. Unfortunately, the quality of that one wasn't the best. Everything felt very dark and the resolution even lower than the Quest 3. Also, there wasn't any stereo correction going on. So yeah, so far, doable to see outside, to grab your drinks, but yeah, not the best one so far. Also, I was able, of course, to try the software that is stripped down version of the Immerse app that you have on the Quest, because apparently you don't need all the features that you have there. For now, there's no social interaction. And you know, so far it's dedicated to actually create the screens in front of you to actually work with your laptop. I'm gonna be honest, the software felt pretty snappy, but not having any eye tracking to actually select things like it happens on the Vision Pro, uh, you actually get to gaze around and pinch uh, with your hand tracking because yeah, there isn't tracking to actually select stuff and there was a bug where the cursor wasn't appearing, so it, it was kind of a mess. I tried to watch one of my videos, I tried to watch a movie, but everything was flickering quite a lot, so it wasn't a really enjoyable experience. I'm pretty sure they can fix it in the future, consider that Immerse is actually a software company that is trying to create hardware, and that's where the ugly part actually comes in. Because creating hardware, it's kind of hard. I've been around like VR companies for a while right now, and I can tell when something is going the right direction, something can get delayed, or something is just not gonna arrive at all. Before trying, I was really convinced that this was going to be a new DECA VR situation, just a, a lot of promises and that's it. By actually getting my hands on with the product, I can tell that this is a real thing. The hardware is completely there. The problem is that they need to figure out how to make this work. Because yeah, this was a very, very, very early prototype and I really doubt that they're gonna be able to actually deliver at the end of this year, like they're supposed to do. I mean, if they're able to actually fix and tracking, eye tracking, barrel distortion, flickering, gazing, interaction, comfort, software, overeating issues, mixed reality, well, as you can see, pretty much everything, well, kudos to them. But yeah, let's be realistic, this, can be kind of art. Immerse was kind of taken back by the fact that it kind of deceived a bit the audience with the first teasers of something that looked really like a pair of sunglasses. And at the end of the day, what we have is an actual virtual reality headset that is very slim and very small, but still a virtual reality headset. To be honest, I'm completely fine with this form factor. If they can deliver those screens for that price point, it's a thousand dollar with all the standalone part in there, it's absolutely incredible and I hope they're gonna do it and I'm really rooting for them. But so far, from my first impressions, well, they really need a lot of work to make this happen and to make this a doable headset. I mean, even the battery pack that it is with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth inside doesn't exist yet. They were actually using an off-the-shelf USB hub to actually power it and bring the USB Type-C to the headset. The strap doesn't exist yet in a, you know, material form. So yeah, it was a very rough early prototype. Potential is there, uh, absolutely fantastic potential. Those screens, those lenses were absolutely insane, but it was the only part of it that uh, actually worked for five minutes. I really appreciate though, them coming out of the way from Texas to actually give demo to different creators to show that this thing is actually real. Now, yes, I believe this is real. I also believe that maybe, just maybe, it needs to be delayed a bit to, you know, be the best it can be because the potential is for sure there and it looks so futuristic and yet, not ready. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I really enjoyed having these hands on. Hopefully they can do something about it, but let me know what you think. Should they delay the thing or 
keep going with this very tight timeline. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, guys, if you liked the video, like. If you didn't like the video, just like. Subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. If you really love the channel, the join button on there. Don't further also the Patreon. Thanks for the Patreons for joining the channel, of course. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.